Welcome back to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd love it for you to hit the subscribe button. Here is our second part of this video series on freelance, remote, and other job sites that might be of interest to you. So in the last video, we looked at traditional freelancing. In this one, we are going to look at sites that specialize in writing, translating, and transcribing. So there are plenty of writing gigs available on sites like Fiverr and Upwork that we looked at in the last video. But there are also sites that really specialize just in writing. So the first one I've got here, the contentpanel.com, uh, they claim is one of the highest paid uh, and most flexible freelance writing platforms. I'm not quite sure how you can be more flexible. Freelance is already pretty flexible. And I'm not really sure how genuine they are on that highest paid. Uh, but it certainly looks like an interesting one. So I thought I would start off with this. Um, with a lot of these sites, it's all pretty generic. Uh, so you, know, you acquire your gigs, do your research, deliver your writing. Um, they have uh, pricing models where I think they can have people subscribing for content, which maybe makes it a little bit different from your traditional uh, just straight here's a gig. And I guess if you are good, maybe you can get a little bit more continuity out of it. So that's the first one, the content panel, uh, and very much, I think, very content writing. So kind of blogs and things for companies and stuff of that ilk. The second one is uh, scribebendy.com. And this is one where I am a little skeptical. And I am sharing it in some ways for that reason. So something to watch out for if you are looking for these, uh, for specific writing sites is there is quite a few, and I'm not saying that this is one, uh, but this reminded me of them, where they are based overseas, uh, and I guess overseas, uh, say Indian subcontinent, as opposed to Australia or America. And as a result, they pay very poorly. And the the writing, really what they're trying to do is uh, recruit native speakers uh, who maybe have not realized how low the pay is, or uh, people who are domestic to them who maybe have slightly better English skills. So with this one, it is much more science and research oriented. Uh, so currently they're looking for freelance editors and proofreaders. Uh, they're wanting that native level English ability. For some reason, they've listed these states and I'm not quite sure what's going on. Uh, with what they are doing that somehow you you can't work for them if you're in one of these locations. But I was a little bit suspect of that. Uh, and there's maybe a few other flags here. So I'm not saying that this specific site is particularly bad. Maybe it's quite good. And feel free if you have some actual knowledge of them to comment uh, below the video. Let us know what your experience has been. Um, but it reminded me of some that I haven't included in the video, but I know are genuinely dodgy. Uh, so I guess, I mean, there's no there's no particular harm in hitting the apply now, jumping in, seeing what's going on. Uh, but I would make sure that's very clear up front, particularly if the jobs involve particularly big bits of writing or proofreading, uh, exactly what the expectations are exactly what kind of writing, if it's a proofreading job, uh, what is the quality of writing that's coming through? Because the other thing with some of the sites that I haven't included is the work that you are writing or editing or proofreading is really, really bad. And so it ends up taking a very long time for you to work through it. Uh, and again, that just be, makes it just not good value for money. So this one I've put in as kind of a, maybe it's okay, but it's got some things uh, that remind me of some of those sites. And it also kind of prompted me to talk about uh, some of those other kinds of slightly more dubious sites. 
when you come across a site that you're not familiar with, I always like to just whack in the name of it plus review or Reddit and just see what other people are saying about it. So maybe jump on Reddit, uh, search for the name of this one, see what they have to say. Okay, next one, Text Broker. Uh, so Text Broker is another content site. It is fairly, fairly general. Um, so similar kind of thing, matching up, finding the jobs, doing the writing. Um, I have not logged into this one, so I'm not 100% sure on uh, what what the level of payment is. Uh, and I gather that it varies quite a lot. Um, and you will need to decide how long it takes you to write things and what you value. Quite often it's on a per word basis. So you need to think about if I'm writing content and actually writing good content, so not just how fast can I type, but writing content, I may need to look for research and references. What do I think is a reasonable per word for me to actually churn these out? And if you're the kind of person that gets uh, writer's block or really kind of deliberates over your writing, then maybe these aren't the gigs for you because you'll just find it takes you too long. Next one, words of worth. So again, start to notice kind of very similar with a lot of these. Um, you know, they've built them up on WordPress. They interesting copyright since 2008. So I suggest they've been around for a while. Um, and for this one, we need to apply to be a writer. So we'll jump in, we give them our details describe the subjects and what we can write about, uh, send in an application. So this has that little bit of application process, uh, which is possibly quite nice for, certainly nice for the people who are looking for writers because it looks like there's some vetting going on, uh, but also potentially good for you as a writer because if there is that vetting going on, uh, you're not not having to compete quite so much on price. Uh, and really, if you're a good writer, you should try not to compete on price whenever you can. So deliver quality instead. Okay, next one. Service Scape has uh, editing, translation, graphic design, and writing. So it's a li little bit more of kind of a full, uh, full suite of different types of uh, professionals, uh, but writing is certainly a big chunk of it. Uh, and if we get the writing, again, like with the last one, um, we need to give them a fair bit of information. Uh, and there's a lot of a lot of terms and uh, conditions in here. I understand how prices and commissions work. Well, let's have a quick look at that. Uh, service scape commission percentages are 50%. Wow. Um, that is a lot. That is substantially more than a lot of the others. So that's something to keep in mind with that one. Uh, I had not followed link, that link before, but I've done it on your behalf. Okay, moving on. Uh, so crowd content is a, another crowd uh, content writing site. Uh, they're very specific about uh, where they want native English speakers to come from. So US, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Um, and they have a freelance uh, marketplace. There's also specific projects as well. So very much like the uh, some of the design type sites and quite a nice mixture as well. So kind of not only blog posts, but kind of technical writing and even things like ebooks, ghost writing. So this is a, uh, a, a bigger and um, more variety in the selection, a little bit like what you might get on a site like Fiverr, uh, but really just dedicated to writing instead. And the final of the writing ones, way with words. So 
Uh, in fact, Way With Words is not a writing one. It is the first of our transcribing ones. So this, uh, with the advent of uh, video being such a popular medium, uh, there is a number of different sites. We've got three here where they just want native speakers that can listen uh, and then transcribe. And the AI tools, I think, are eventually going to completely remove these jobs. But for the time being, uh, the AI tools, they're okay, but they're not perfect. Something that I notice, uh, for instance, when I put up a Skillshare video, always gets my name wrong, always gets a couple of other things that I say just with my, uh, I guess it's still a Kiwi accent, but my uh, Kiwi blended with a little bit of Australia these days accent. Uh, I find that it gets some things wrong. And again, that's why they are looking for people from very particular countries because there are quirks of the different accents that uh, the machine learning, the algorithms don't really pick up. So freelance or full-time, 45 cents to $1.73 per audio minute. Really important that you note that, that that's per audio minute. Uh, so depending on how long it takes you to turn that minute of audio into transcript uh, depends on whether that is a good value to you or not. The next two pretty similar. Um, so transcribeme.com, uh, they quote per hour instead of uh, per minute. And in fact, if we convert those, that other one, what did they say? 45 cents to a dollar something. This one's saying 15 to $22 per audio hour. So whilst they are saying it's the industry's best rates, uh, that suggests not. The only thing that could make this not be worse is if they have better algorithms. So if you're receiving a half-done transcript already and you just need to listen and make corrections then it could be that you churn through audio minutes and audio hours more quickly. So that would be the one thing, and that would be why it's maybe worth trying both of these, and in fact the third one as well, uh, to see whether they will uh, actually be easier than it sounds like. So if you have to write uh, or if you have to type every single minute that the people are speaking, uh, then that's going to be pretty painful. But if you are really just editing an AI transcript, cleaning it up, fixing things, uh, then it's maybe not quite as bad. So our last one uh, is Scribe, and again, similar kind of similar kind of thing. You can see they have a really wide range: five to twenty-five dollars uh, per audio hour. Short files, less than ten minutes. Uh, and so they they explicitly say there's a free automated transcript. So it's, they, they say it saves around 60%. I guess it depends on the quality of their software and the clarity of the speakers as well. So another one that you may be interested in. The very final site we're going to look at is Translation. Uh, and so this looks like a site that's came from a little bit of a time warp uh, and I didn't search, I came across this one kind of randomly. I haven't searched to see if there is other better ones around. Uh, but basically this is translation jobs. And we can see there's a whole lot here. Belarusian, Indonesian, Polish, German. Uh, so quite a mix there. So if you are multilingual, uh, then you might find some interesting things in here. Uh, if you have already been doing some translation somewhere else and you found other sites, uh, definitely comment below. So that's it for the video today. Uh, so we've looked at writing, transcription, and translation. Uh, I've still got two more videos to come in the series, uh, looking at creative sites, surveys, and then remote jobs, uh, the full jobs rather than freelance type jobs as well. Hopefully it's been helpful and I will see you back for the next one.